Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at the Voidwalker speedrun. Before you get started on your speedrun, it's important to set up your character properly, namely the equipment and food that you have on, your talents and how you distribute them, and then as many sources of multi-kill as you can gain outside of your equipment. Starting with our equipment, we have three main priorities for our equipment. The first is hitting the movement speed cap, which is 350%. Having more movement speed could give you a little bit more damage, but the main thing is that you hit at least 350 movement speed using any of your equipment, food, potions, anything that you can to up that movement speed. The next priority is going to be having enough damage. The more damage you have, the more of the multi-kill damage tiers you'll hit, so you'll benefit more from multi-kill. And that would be our third priority. Having as much multi-kill as we can find from as many sources as we can is going to really help our progress and allow us to clear maps a little bit faster, which means you can get at least one more portal unlocked for having a few percent more multi-kill. So going over our equipment tabs really quick, for our primary pieces of gear, we want to use the best armor that we can. If you have the full magma set, it is going to give you the most damage. Make sure you're using any of your upgrade slots that you can to get more luck, as that's going to increase your total damage. So we'll make sure we max those out before we start our run. For the head slot, I am using the golden food effect. This is not optimal. You want to use the best helmet that you can. I just don't have a better helmet at this time. For your neck, you want to use the hollow tail pendant for the extra multi-kill as this gives us a lot more multi-kill than any else, anything else we can get. If you don't have this neck option, there are a few more options such as the crescent moon pendant to give you more mob respawn. Chizor's caustic scarf also gives you more mob respawn and can give you a decent damage bonus, but I prefer the multi-kill over the damage as my damage is already significant enough to get us through most worlds. After that, we do have the Deathly Cluster Pendant to give you more mob respawn. These are all additional options in case you don't have the Hollowtail Pendant, but this is you're going to be your best in slot. After that, we do have our rings. Our rings should be the Emperor's Opals, unless you have the World 1, 2, 3, and 4 rings to give you more kills in the specific worlds. Make sure you're changing these rings out as you go through the worlds, otherwise you're going to benefit more from the opal rings if you're going to forget to change them out. As a last option, you can pick up the tenacity ring to give you more total damage, and if you haven't unlocked any of these, the ram ring to give you 4% more damage is also another option. Anything that gives you AFK gain rate is not going to help you during the speed run, so you're just looking for the most damage and the most multi-kill that you can out of all of your equipment. Moving on to our, our specials tab, there's a few things we can do to help out, starting with the V-Man name tag to give us more multi-kill per tier, a little extra luck and weapon power doesn't hurt. For your trinkets, you wanna use anything that gives you either percent to luck, which will increase your damage, or if you have the pincer hand keychains to give you more multi-kill, it's another great option. Don't forget about the uh, laboratory chips that can double the bonuses from the keychain. So if you have a 24% pincer hand, doubling that bonus is gonna be a significant increase to your overall multi-kill. Moving on to the tools tab, we're just going to use these as stat sticks. Just anything you can to get more luck on your equipment is going to help your overall damage. I know it seems like a small amount of luck, but uh, just putting the luck on each of my tools here at Void gave me another 300 million damage, and that can be a significant boost. After this, we can move on to the foods tab, and our top priority here is going to be getting to the 350% movement speed cap. Keep in mind that anything that increases the feasty statue is going to help boost how much movement speed you're getting out of these foods, and you don't need a lot of these particular foods to be able to get through a good speed run. Your next priority is gonna be anything that increases your damage, such as the golden kebabs to get more total damage, or using the potent strength potion. If you have a significant stack of golden nom witches, this can give you a decent amount of damage, However, at this time, I'm getting more damage from my Potent Potion of Strength. And your last option for your foods would be anything that increases your base luck again. Next up, let's go over our talents. There's a few things we can do to really maximize the effectiveness in our run. First up is you want to max out Void Trial Rerun. Every additional point in this gives you 1.5 more seconds in the speed run, and this is huge for getting more portals unlocked, so you really want to max this out. 
Our next priorities is going to be a split between Void Radius and Bossing in Vain. Both of these are very useful, so you do want at least some points into each of these. And depending on how far you can get into the worlds, Bossing Vein may be more important. If you're only able to clear one or two worlds, then having Void Radius is going to be your bigger priority. Both of these talents really help your overall speed run. So after you've done one or two runs, you should be able to get a significant amount of points in these and that's gonna help you push farther. Void Radius does give you more multi-kill after you use it for 20 additional seconds. So timing your use of Void Radius is going to be really big and making sure that you can get the most out of your multi-kill during those 20 seconds. Keep in mind that this is a map clear, so you don't want to use this if you've almost completed the portal for that map. You want to save it and get the most out of the next map. Bossing Vein does give you more uh, kill count or more portal count as you're clearing maps. Keep in mind that different levels of bosses will give you more portals. So in normal mode, Almarok will give you one portal count. Chaotic gives you two portal counts and the Nightmare gives you three portal counts. Our next big priority after that is going to be quad jab. This is not a huge bonus because we're going to be one shotting most of the mobs. But if you don't have enough damage, this can give you an extra damage source to give you a little bit more damage. After that, your priority really depends on where you need your points at. Void Statuification is a really good bonus and this will really help out if you have the statues to level up. This is going to be huge for getting more bonuses out of the Feasty statue to give you more food effect, which means you have more slots available in your food instead of using all of your slots for potions. After that, you do have Master of the System to give you more multi-kill. This is not very useful if you're on your first or second run, as this really depends on your speed run high score. So after you've done a couple runs, you'll be able to benefit a little bit more from your overall speed run, give you more multi-kill, and that can be another significant boost for you. For further damage talents, you do have Eternal Luck. This is a huge damage bonus for the V-Man. This gives you 400 base luck as well as 400 more from if you have the points to max out Lucky Horseshoe. If you have spare points left over at this stage, you can put them in Power Orb to get a little bit more damage. And then, then your next and last priority would be putting points into the three stats like Eternal Strength, Eternal Agility, and Eternal Wiz. These do give you small bonuses just simply because of the alchemy bubbles that give you bonuses for having more health, more mana, and more movement speed. Let's moving on to the Maestro tab. There's a few big priorities in here, starting with Bliss and Chips to give you more points to Lucky Horseshoe. After that, you have Skillage Damage for more damage based on your skill levels. And then the Skillia statue gives you more bonus to your Feasty and Kapow statues. Can be a decent bonus for you if you have enough points. From here, you do have Triple Jab to give you more damage if you can't one-shot the mobs already but this is one of my big priorities as this can help me push the later mobs that have more health. From here, we do have clever clover obols, which give you more luck depending on how much your obols are. I would say this is not worth it and I would rather put points into J-Man was better to give me more points into tab two as you're going to need a significant amount of points in tab two to max out that lucky horseshoe. You do want to have at least a few points in the coin toss as this can help you kill a few more mobs if you're struggling to get the mob kills depending on the map that you're on. From here on tab 2 we do have Lucky Horseshoe to give you more base luck. This should be your biggest priority. After that you have Flunky Fabrics to give you more luck from your equipment. This can be pretty big depending on if you have all of your stats maxed out and those upgrade stones used. Lucky Hit increases how much damage you get from luck. This should be a very big priority for you, and I would max this out even over putting some of the points into Lucky Horseshoe. From there, you do have Two Punch Man. Again, we've already gone over triple and quad jabs, so this can be another damage source from you. After that, a few points into Indiana Attack can really help you clear the map a little bit easier, and from there, everything else is optional. On tab 1, your biggest priority should be putting points into Gildas Sword and Sharpened Axe to give you more base damage, and then points into Lucky Clover to boost your luck some more. Everything else is small damage boost that you get from the Alchemy Bubbles, Strength, Wisdom, and, and Agility to boost up health and mana, also give you a little bit more damage as well as movement speed. Knuckle Buster should be your last priority as this only gives you crit hit damage, not a big priority if you don't have everything else maxed out. 
I will mention that having points into sleeping on the job is absolutely useless for the speed run. So if you have points in here, it may be worth respecking before you uh, start your speed run. On your star talents, you do have a few things that can help boost your damage. This is starting with best beginner class, and this gives you more weapon power, will of the eldest for more base stats. Points into hemoglobin is not a bad option, just in case you don't have enough uh, defense to survive all the mobs. can give you a little bit of healing, as it would be really bad to uh, die in the middle of a speed run. On tab 2, we have a few big priorities, starting with dungeonic damage for more damage, based on how much you've done your dungeons. And then frothy malt can give you a really good bonus to your food as well. Mega crit is very worth mentioning as this can give you the option of mega crits. So if you have over 100% crit chance, you can get deal 300% more damage. Uh, and this isn't even the max level on this talent. On tab three, we do have a few options that can help us out, starting with the stat overload to give you more strength, agility, wisdom, and luck. It is a significant boost for the Void Walker, but um, there are a few good things as well, such as over accurate crit. This is only really useful if you haven't hit the 100% crit chance, but if you can, I would use this to, to get to that 100%, which allows you to get to the mega crits and so on and so forth. From there, everything else is optional. Tiptoe quickness is absolutely useless as your accuracy is not gonna be a problem if you have the stats and you're gonna be way over 200% speed, so it's just not worth it. And for the last section, before we get started on the speed run, we're gonna go over the different sources of multi-kill, starting in the World 1 stamps. You do have the multi-kill stamp to give you more base multi-kill. In World 2 Alchemy, you do have two large bubbles that can help, starting with Kill per Kill to give you more kills to your portals. After that, you have Mr. Massacre, which gives you more multi-kill. There is one other bubble worth mentioning, and that is the Big P to give you a higher bonus from the minor links on your Divinity statues. We'll go over this in World 5. For your Vials tab, you do have the Slower G Drink to give you more base multi-kill. It is quite expensive, but very worth leveling it up. Also in World 2 is the Post Office, and you can get more multi-kill from the Utility Box. There are several other great boxes, such as the Damage Boxes, the Food Box, or even the Drop Box to give you more luck. From here, we can move on to the Ovals, and your priority should be getting as many multi-kill Ovals as you can, both in your Personal tab and in your Family tab. This can be a significant bonus for you. However, if you don't have those, using as many luck obols as you can to give you more damage, the cheese or obols for more percent damage, or even the troll obol to give you percent to stats. Moving on to world three, we have one prayer that can be really useful, that is balance of pain. This gives you more multi-kill at the cost of defense and accuracy. There is another one that I should mention, which is Fibers of Absence. I would not use this as for the most part, you're lowering your total damage for more Death Note kills, which is actually going to end up being about the same for more Death Note for lowering your damage. You also have the Salt Lick in World 3. The bonus that requires the purple salts gives you more multi-kill. This is quite expensive, but it is worth leveling up. From here, we do also have the Death Note. This is a big thing to mention as any Death Note bonuses you do have actually count for this. So if you can level up your skulls to the Lava Skulls or even higher before you do your speed run, you're definitely going to benefit for having more multi-kill in each of the worlds. So make sure you're maxing out the bonuses in your Death Note. Moving on to World 4 where we have several significant bonuses, starting in the Laboratory, the Killer's Bright Side can double the accounts that you're getting from Portals and Death Notes. And I would even put a few more characters in here and from Normal to make sure you're maxing out your orange, ball, uh, your orange Jewels, as this can give you 30% more damage on all of your characters, specifically for your Void Walker here, as this is a big bonus. Moving on to the console, your chip should look something like this. If you have the bonuses to double your cards, that's going to be significant. And then we also have the bonuses to double our pendants and also our keychain slots. After that, if you don't have any of these slots, you really want to max out as many as of these multi-kill chips as you can, as this is going to be a big bonus from it. If you don't have any of these chips, using things like basic attack speed can be nice, monster respawn can be good, or even the weapon power from the chip here. 
And for World 5, there's two things that we need to look at. First is the artifact. The Trilobite Rock can give you more multi-kill per damage tier. This is 50% at Ancient and 75% if you have the Eldritch form. So this is a significant bonus to our multi-kill. And for the last section in World 5, we do have the Nuba Sect. This is another two times multiplier. This does stack with a laboratory. So between the two of them, that's four times more kills to your portals and your death note. Keep in mind that we are using the big P large bubble, which is gonna give us another 20% or so to the total damage on this. Don't overlook your cards here as there's two cards that can give us more multi-kill, starting with the Sugma for 10% multi-kill per tier, and then the Clammy card that also gives you an additional 7% multi-kill per tier. The rest of your card should look something like this to give you more damage on your Maestro or your Voidwalker, and that's really gonna help you push farther. For your card sets, you have two options. First is using bosses and nightmares to give you more damage. And the second option is actually using the food effect to give you more movement speed, depending on what you need. There are two last small bonuses. First from the arcade shop, you can increase your multi-kill per tier. This is quite expensive, so it's not something you're going to level up in a hurry, but if you have it, it can be a nice bonus. After that, you also have your star sign. There is a multi-kill star sign for 15% more multi-kill, but if you have the infinite star signs, there are several good ones that can be useful, such as the bolt work to give you more damage. This will require a little bit more movement speed though. And then you also have the overachiever, which gives you more damage. And we really don't care about fight AFK gain rates. So these can be nice bonuses for you. So we're about to get started on our speed run here. We have one last thing to talk about, and that is planning out your route on the map. Keep in mind that in certain areas, you will have two portals to unlock, such as in the bean map, you can unlock the portal for the Birch Enclave. These maps don't have to be entered. You're just simply trying to unlock the portal by killing one or two more in the bean map to unlock two portals. Also in the slime map, you can unlock the stick map, this is really good to plan out that if you use your void radius in the walking stick map, this should basically instantly unlock the Nutto map and that will allow you to kill Nuttos one more time and unlock basically two free portals here for basically nothing. Once you clear the Nuttos, you can teleport down to the snakes and then continue on towards the boss room. One big thing to mention when you're planning your route is make sure you have enough keys to unlock the highest boss that you can kill remember that the bosses do give you more counts for killing more difficult bosses. So killing the nightmare version will give you three additional portals. And then once you cleared the boss, I would not go back out. I would just then teleport on to the next world and continue on through it. There is gonna be a lot of pre-planning on this and there are optimized routes and people are figuring out more every day. So if you see something better than what I'm doing, then absolutely do it. This is just gonna be a basic run to try to push as far as we can. So let's get started here. As soon as you spawn in, you're gonna start hitting the mushrooms and running through the maps. Keep in mind that you can use auto on this, but it's not optimized until you get to certain areas. Here on the bean map, we're gonna try to kill one or two more and this is gonna unlock one more portal for us. Keep going down the maps as fast as you can. And if you are using auto, it is recommended that you use the maps to teleport around as this can give you just even more overall kill count. Make sure you're using your abilities and we've unlocked this portal here and now we can use our void radius and head up to the top. Keep in mind that you always wanna be moving towards the portal. Don't get stuck fighting mobs near the entrance. Once we kill a few of these nuttos and can move it, move on, we can teleport onto the snake map and keep fighting these snakes here. Again, we're gonna be trying to get to the portal. We don't wanna stop and hit mobs at the beginning. We just wanna fight the carrots. Oh, look at that grand frogger that I don't have time for. Let's keep moving and fighting the goblins and on down to the base of the map to unlock the boss portal first. Keep in mind that you will need to fight at least a few of these boards to unlock the boss portal and then head back up top. Don't worry about using your voidification on this attempt. It's better to use it when you come out. So enter the nightmare version of the boss and fight him as quick as you can. Once he's done, head back out 
And at this time, it's okay to go ahead and use your Voidification and then start teleporting onto the Sandy Pots. Kill one or two of these and that should unlock your next map. And keep in mind, you only have 20 seconds, so you really want to capitalize on this and kill as many as you can. I got two portals unlocked here for unlocking the butterfly map there. And we're moving on to kill the next map zone as quick as possible. Here we have the mafiosos and it should take probably a one or two kills or maybe three or four, depending on how much stats you have to get to the next map. And we have sandcastles here. Again, we wanna head up top and we wanna make sure we're using our attacks and using your voidification as often as you can to keep unlocking maps. Again, you're going to be fighting these mobs and you just wanna keep moving towards the portal at all times. Here we have the mashed potatoes here and we're moving on to the next zone as quickly as possible. Once you get to the sands of time, this is when you're really gonna wanna start using your teleports more. These larger maps can really take extra time to fight. So you really don't wanna waste time here. Once you kill one or two of your snow bees, head into the Afont room. And this is gonna be a boss fight that takes a little bit more time. So you really wanna plan for it and make sure you have the time to use it. Remember that you can use coin toss from the bottom rung here. And that can really give you some extra time to keep going on and then you don't have to fight that arm. It's just a little bit of extra time saver and then we want to teleport on to our snow guys here. Remember we're almost up for our voidification so we can use that and then head on. These maps are gonna start requiring a lot more kill counts so you really want to make the most of it whenever you have your voidification up and these mobs are really where you're gonna start spending a lot more time in one area instead of just moving on to the next map. Uh, don't get trapped here. You do need to go downstairs to go to the portal on the stashes, not upstairs, as the upstairs requires a significant amount of more portal kills. This is one of the current in-game strats is to actually teleport here to use your voidification um, on the stir stash map to unlock the rams and get a few more kills and then teleport back to the start area. So moving on again, I used my fortification a little too early there. I really should have waited until I got to this map as that would have allowed me to clear a full map instead of spending and wasting time on the blocks there that I, I had already half cleared. So we're on to our snow guys here, trying to kill as many as we can while voidification is up. And we just are gonna start spending a little bit more time so we can start autoing to make sure we keep uh, killing as much as we can and at this point one of the other strats you can use when you have auto on is to leave your map up and the golden dot will open up here in just a minute and once it unlocks and we can teleport instantly and we can teleport now and we have auto on so that's going to save us a couple seconds every map there remember, remember to keep watching your voidification So normally once you complete your speed run, it'll teleport you back to the world one town and you'll be able to check your talent points here to see if you've completed a new high score. Remember that every additional portal will give you more talent points. So you really wanna spend these points when you can and then try for a better score next time. Um, 
keep in mind that when you get close to the end of it that you really want to be pushing for that boss or anything that you can to get a few more portal counts even if that means going to a different world such as in the uh, time that I was spending on killing the bot boxes there I probably could have teleported to the world four zones and gotten a little bit more kills as some of these kill counts require less kills than the bot boxes do. However, I really wanted to try to push for Cheezor there as that would have given me three additional portals, but I was just a few seconds shy. I definitely can optimize some more on using my void, um, void radius a little bit more optimally. And keep in mind that if you want to use auto, that you really want to turn off the ability to use autos during the auto attack. And then if you're using auto, you really want to utilize your teleporting and just teleporting to the new map instead of trying to turn auto off and running to the next map. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and drop a comment if you're enjoying our content. And a huge shout out to our patrons. Your support means the world to us. If you would like to become a patron, check out the link in the description for more details. And be sure to visit our merch store so you can get some pretty cool stuff. And if you have any thoughts or questions, please let me know.